Hello everybody and welcome back to another Kings of War battle report. I'm Visibly Riley, and this week we have Varengar vs Goblins in a 2300 point battle of Rays. First up, we have my opponent's Goblin Army. It opens with five hordes of Rabble, one of whom has the Healing Brew, one has the Diadem of Dragonkind, and the last has a Maw Pup. Uh, then we have two Maw, Pup, Maw Beast packs, sorry, one with the Crystal Pendant of Retribution and the other with Mogwans as an upgrade. Uh, just real quick on Easy Army, I know it's listing Mogwans as a separate unit, uh, which I believe it was in 2nd Ed, but it definitely isn't now. It's more like the Wilt Father, uh, and I do believe you can bring... Uh, artifacts, magical artifacts on that, so just something to look for. Anyway, then we have three War Trombones, followed by two Mop Up Launchers, two Goblin Blasters, and two Wingets. Then the Cavalcade of Heroes starts with a Bangit with the Wings of Honey Maze, three Wizzes, one with the Boomstick, one with Zephyr Crown, and one with Inspiring Talisman and Hex 2. Then finally, we have Mogwa and Juice, and Kuzlo and Madfall for 2300. So, pretty interesting list. Moving on to my Varengert, it's the same one I've been playing lately. It opens with three regiments of Draugr, followed by two hordes of Snow Trolls, one of whom has the Staying Stone and one has the Chalice of Wrath. Then we have two regiments of Snow Foxes, two Jabberwocks, two Magi, one of whom with the Inspiring Talisman, a Horse, and the Drain Life 6 spell, and the other has just the Drain Life 6. Then we have a Jarl on Frostfang with the Blade of Slashing and Snow Fox, Magnild of the Fallen, and for allies, we have the Ubiquitous Regiment of Heart Piercers with the Wilt Father for 2300. Moving on to Raze, as this is a base book scenario, uh, I recommend just pausing it if you want to take a look at how it works. But I will mention a few of the things that uh, I think about this because it is the most dynamic scenario in the base book because you actually burn the objective markers, right? Um, but real quick, the uh, objective markers, well, there it is. <laughs> I lost my cursor. Uh, being deployed more than three, uh, more than six inches from the center line, most people would assume this means you center the objective marker, uh, like on that 18 inch from deployment line, right? Because 24 minus 6, 18. Uh, but you actually don't. You put the farthest point of the token touching that 18 inch line so that there's always 12 inches between you, right? So it, it's, you know, it's mildly counterintuitive. Uh, and then it also starts scoring on the second on, on the second player. I'm sorry, not the second player. Round two period, uh, which is not. I, I don't think this is a good idea because it makes it so a lot of the slower armies, for example, like uh, a zombie unit, can go eight inches in two rounds without uh, without surging, while a flying unit can go forty inches. Right? If you do round three, then that eighteen inch makes a bit more sense because you can go twelve inches with the zombies plus a, uh, a very small surge will get you. Uh, to the within three to contest at least your own objectives. So I don't believe in round round two scoring. I think it's a bad idea. And secondly, uh, you should start scoring on second player's turn. Otherwise, the impetus on first player is just a little too high. Um, so anyway, those are just my thoughts. If you want to take a look at it, uh, pause here. Moving on, we have the table. I don't have the best picture. <laughs> Sue me. <laughs> it just didn't work out. Uh, then we have two height nine forests on the table. We have two height flat pieces of difficult. We actually have two height three hills, one rather large one in the center of the field and one I didn't mark because it's off here on the very side. Uh, it's it's pretty much parallel if you look from corner to corner, right, uh, with this forest. Then we have two height two obstacles, both on the large hill, so they're actually height five in total. Then finally, we have two height seven pieces of impassable. So again, uh, fun table. I like that big hill idea with the two pieces uh, or the two obstacles on it. Uh, my opponent set that up, so I thought that would be fun. Uh, moving on, speaking of my opponent, let's talk about the Goblin Army. We're starting in the top left corner as of that last map. We open with a Winget and two Rabble Hordes, one of whom has a Healing Brew. And before you at me, uh, it's not my army. I can't paint these ones, guys. Uh, so if you want to see it painted, feel free to bug the Pacific Northwest Facebook group. You'll find uh, all the players there. Uh, then we have the Bangit with Wings of Honey Maze, a Mop Up Launcher, and the second Winget. Off to the right of that, we have the Zephyr Crown Wiz, the Boomstick Wiz, a Mobius Regiment with the Pendant of Retribution, uh, along with the Final Wiz with the Hex and Inspiring Talisman, and the second Mobius Regiment. This one is Mogwaz. And to the right of that ish, uh, we have the Kuzlo and Modball, lovely model. Uh, behind it being the third Rabble Horde, along with one, two, three War Trombones and one, two Blasters. I love these custom blasters my opponent has made. Uh, they're really Green Goblin-esque, which I love, especially considering the Pumpkin Bombs. And uh, again, more centrally, we have the 
uh, fourth and fifth Rabble Horde, the front of which has the Diadem Dragonkind, and to the right of that is Magua and Juice. And off here, a very blurry picture of the Mop Up launcher just chilling out. Uh, facing up against the blurry Mop Up, we have the Yarl on Frostfang with the Blade of Slashing and Snowfox. We have one, two Jabberwock along with the Magus with Drain Life 6, Inspiring Talisman, and a Horse. To the right of that, we have the first Draugr Regiment along with the first Horde of Snow Trolls, this one with the Staying Stone. And behind them, we have the 1-2 Snow Fox Regiments along with the Drain Life 6 only Magus and the second Snow Troll Horde with the Chalice of Wrath. And again, uh, a bit more centrally, we have the Heart Piercer Regiment along with the second Draugr Regiment and McNild. And off here on their Lonesome, we have the final Draugr Regiment. So that's going to do it for deployment. Let's take a look at turn 1, starting with the Varengar. So Varengar win the roll-off and advance forward. I can't get rid of the square anymore. Uh, I, yeah, anyway. Uh, so yeah, I have. Uh, I, I just basically run my army forward as fast as I can. Uh, turn one is really important in a lot of games like this when you're not... Uh, when you don't plan to kill your opponent's army, right? Like, I can only take so many goblin units in a fight. Uh, so instead, what I'm going to do is just try to zone them out so it'll take them a bit too long to actually get these objective tokens because, again, at the end of the day, it's about the objectives. Uh, I didn't take a picture of the Wiltfather. That's because I scouted them forward and I forgot. <laughs> so originally, I actually deployed them over here so they could scout behind this wall. Uh, but then last second, I decided, nah, I'm going to push them over here in deployment. So I scout behind this, or scout plus move behind this wall. Uh, and it's just a question of how aggressive I want to get. Uh, I was I was helping run this night, like I was answering a lot of rules questions because there's a lot of new players up here, which is great. But still, it's a little taxing uh, as as the only person who you know has some semblance of rule knowledge. Um, so I was answering a lot of questions, meaning that I wasn't paying too much attention to what my opponent's list was when they were setting up. Uh, so I, originally, I was like, yeah, okay, I can probably go pretty aggressively, and I still kind of agree with that. Uh, right now even looking at the items like i knew they had three whizzes i knew that they had three uh trombones i didn't realize that they had the diadem of dragon kind i forgot that the blaster shot and i didn't realize they had the boomstick uh right like my opponent told me these things they have the cards in front of them too i just you know was uh in my mind in too many places spinning too many plates so <clears throat> Yeah, I was like, okay, so I can probably be a bit more aggressive with the Wolf Father and just accept the shooting that my opponent has. But still, I think this, the my original idea, would have been a little bit better because it forces that uh, short range fire, that range 12, to move a little bit closer to my lines. And since we have this very large hill uh, very centrally in this scenario, it means that I can just sit behind it uh, and wait for my opponent to do that because they're going to have to move forward to get that uh, range fire power in. So yeah, this probably would have been better in the end, but I didn't do that. Uh, off here on the right, I do move forward with the trolls as fast as they can go. These ones get clogged up in the woods along with this Draugr. Uh, I do, this time, <laughs> keep my snow foxes a little bit farther back so that they can pivot, right, move, pivot with Nimble, and then move again. So I can always just uh, move them around if I need to, or, you know, if I want them straight up over here, whatever. They've got room to pivot now. Um, <clears throat> and since they're speed 8, it's not that big of a deal for being uh, a little bit farther behind the trolls. And off here on the right, since my opponent completely abandoned this flank, uh, I'm planning just to pick up these two objective tokens. And with my my objective token uh, placement, I forgot to mention this, uh, I placed these two specifically because of this piece of impassable. I knew it would be difficult for the goblin hordes to get around it. Uh, and if they did choose to do that, I think I could I could punch right through them with my, uh, with my flank over here. Uh, so that was going to be my plan. My opponent has a bit more of a central, like, you know, if this is the map, Right, I went one, two, one, and they went like one, 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 kind of, right? So, and then the one in the center. So I stacked a flank, they didn't. Um, just, uh, but they, the goblins can do that. They're a, lot, they're a lot wider, and wingets are such a versatile unit that they can just fly over and grab them anyway. So anyway, that's the plan. Uh, and in my shooting phase, I fire, uh, I've got Lightning Bolt 4, Lightning Bolt 4. I fire both of them into Magua here. Uh, you know, it's on fives with Elite, or with Pseudo Elite. Uh, and I just miss all, miss all eight, which is fair enough, right? So let's move into turn one for the goblins. And turn one for the goblins, the first thing that happens, this Bangit just runs on by. I'm perfectly fine with that. That was the plan with uh, Magnild. But uh, here is a mistake I made. And uh, actually, Paige Neo, I think, recently did a video uh, about this, and I'm really guilty of doing this a lot. There's no reason not to just hold my Draugr back just 
ever so slightly to not make a perfect like this is perfectly within 20 right to dodge both of my dragger units right there's just no reason to do this i could have just held one of them back very slightly uh probably this one and been in almost the exact same board state and still been able to threaten this wing it if it chooses to do this so yeah mistake by me off here on the right, you can see my opponent, yeah, they just advance forward. Uh, they maintain a battle line. I'm not so sure about this um, because it's pretty clogged up. I might have just moved forward with the War Trombones and taken my shots and then just made sure that, you know, the trolls aren't going to get into the combat and so on. Just, you know, one Wilt Father is bad enough. Don't, don't, you know, make it worse. Uh, but yeah, they move forward. Uh, as you can see, these little squigs, whenever they're on their own, uh, that just is marking my opponent's... Um, uh, mop ups, right? So he's mop up launchers. Uh, this unit has gained one. I think the back one has one, and then the one that came one uh, with one is on the far left. Uh, so yeah, uh, with all of my opponents shooting, it's just all going into the Wilt Father. I think that even even with the blasters, maybe. Um, so we've got lightning bolt four, you know, uh, breath thirty, and then lightning bolt twelve off there into me. It's like eight ish wounds on average. Uh, and I'm not too worried about it about that. I'm a dash 19, even if they spike, right? Like, eh. and the blasters have uh, three shots each <clears throat> on fives normally, but they're going to have moved, right? So they're going to be on sixes. Uh, I don't grant, I don't have cover from this. Obviously it's high two, I'm high five. Uh, so I'm not super worried about it, but it was an aggressive move. Uh, you can see back here, Kuzla is just sort of <laughs> running over here to uh, support the right flank, which I think is probably the right idea. And yeah, so my opponent takes aim with all their shooting, uh, all these guys too, all the whiz, all the wizards, and they do 11 wounds to my Wilt Father and just roll back to back eights, and uh, it, that super sucks, you know, it happens, it's, I tend to be an aggressive player going like, yeah, the, you know, the dice are with me, they're with me, right, uh, and they just weren't here, so I lose the Wilt Father at the top of one, or the bottom of one, and that's not good, uh, obviously, but I don't know. We're, we're going to have to recover from it. I'm still not sold on uh, on not doing the Wolf Father. Like, I probably would have just, if we go to the last picture, I probably would have, again, put him here and just forced the army forward. Still would have died because uh, it's the same number of shots that are going to get on him. But uh, I think that it would have just forced my opponent forward a bit more uh, to make sure that these units, right, like, it, again, if they just take their range forward, I can just start picking them off without too much retribution uh, as a worry so uh yeah i lose that that sucks but uh we're going to just see what we can do about it with turn two uh you can see the token so like i have that's one of mine right there and then two three over there and my opponent has one directly under these draugr uh in front of these draugr and then one in the forest so those are where the tokens are uh, and turn two, starting with the Varengar. So we're going to have to push back after the loss of the Wilt Father. Uh, I do have these trolls within charge range, and this is sort of what I'm talking about, right? Like these units don't really need to be forward just yet, I don't think. Uh, so I move one of my Snow Foxes because, you know, I left them room to pivot. Uh, I move forward to block the obstacle. So when the trolls charge, they're not going to end up being hindered. Uh, and then I run the other Snow Foxes forward uh, just to mess with the lines a little bit, right? Uh, and, uh, yeah, be, uh, I, I, I wish I could have seen these units, but, uh, I just couldn't, I believe maybe I could have seen these ones. Maybe if they put their leader point on it, right. Can't I see them? Uh, they just have cover, but anyway, I digress. Uh, I move forward with the trolls a little bit. I'm not too worried about this. Uh, I am planning to just jam with this unit anyway, so I'm not really worried about getting a charge or not getting a charge. Uh, onto some of these units just because and, and again there's a difference between jamming and tar pitting right like this uh unit of you know like rabble are a great tar pit but not a great jammer because a tar pit is going to hold you in place for a while right it's it's slow to get through it while a jamming unit it's pretty quick to get through it but it's going to jam up your lines right like i'm just trying to trap my opponent in their deployment zone as, cl as close as uh, to that as possible so that's what i mean when i say that uh, I move forward with my Heart Piercers, which makes it so I have to move forward with the Draugr to support them. Uh, I'm planning just to get some shots off real quick. Uh, and then I, yeah, I do move with the Jarl and the Jabberwock on the right here just to grab those two tokens very easily. Uh, the rest of my army just sort of h hangs out in that forest, uh, and I send Magnild into an easy charge into the Bangit. It was kind of funny because my opponent was like, uh, can you charge the Bangit? And I'm like, I'm an individual. And he was like, what? And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> if you never played this game before? But it's we're just all so rusty up here. So anyway, I charge in there. 
And yes, here's the first combat. Uh, I do eight wounds because the Bangit has a special rule that says if you roll a six uh, to wound, you do two wounds instead of one. Uh, and I roll a double one. So first double one in the game. Uh, not great going from, you know, my opponent getting a, a, a decent, you know, pretty spicy roll on the Welt Father into getting a double one of my own. Uh, but, you know, that's obviously not uh, not the whole game. Uh, these trolls end up doing 12 wounds to the rabble, which is pretty good. I mean, I have 18 I only have 18 attacks, but I am hitting on fours and wounding on twos rerollable. Uh, so, meh. The one thing that, you know, again, sucked a little bit, I rolled a pretty low nerf here. I think I rolled a four uh, because these guys are normally a seven to waver, but Kuzlo is within six. So it was only a, it was, uh, only a six that I needed here because they were only an 18, 20. Uh, but, you know, I can't roll the back to back eights or even the six to get the waiver. Uh, but again, I'm not too worried about it. Over here, yeah, I pick up the two tokens uh, as planned. And here's the end of turn shot. As you can see, yeah, I picked up those two tokens. I did fire um, into this blaster with all of my guns, uh, which is why I moved the heart piercers forward. They had an unobscured uh, shot. Well, slightly obscured, but I'm on the hill. These these uh, war trombones are not, so I have a height advantage into this blaster. And then I'm also firing some of this lightning bolt. Uh, I fired this lightning bolt. It looks like I did one wound to Magua. Fair this lightning bolt, I do nothing, uh, and then the heart piercers thankfully just pick up the slack and kill that blaster, which is important because this blaster, if this entire line like shifts to the left, uh, could have charged into my trolls, but this blaster can't. Uh, so it's just well, I mean maybe no because of the where the snow foxes are, right? They can't come within one of me unless they're charging. War trombones cannot charge. So yeah, I've trapped that blaster, killed the one that might have been able to get into me, and then just run into here to start the uh, to start the jar uh, the the jamming operation. Right, I can just you know kill these guys off and run into them again. So again, I'm not too worried about this rabble uh, not getting wavered, but it would have been nice. Uh, and then yeah, the double one sucked, <laughs> but that's gonna be it. So let's move into turn two after we do the scoring. So the Varengar are up to two VP. The goblins are still at zero. So, with that, we go into Goblin turn 2. Uh, first off, yeah, the Bangit just disengages and chills out. The uh, Winget that was here, just, you can see the ever so slightly at space, uh, just flies off over there to make sure that uh, Magnilde can't charge it. Uh, I think that's a pretty good move. Uh, both the Goblins here just advance forward a little bit. Uh, we've got one unit, the uh, Crystal Pendant unit, charging into my Draugr. They are going to be hindered, so that's going to be 12 attacks on 4s. Um, still, it could mess up the Draugr. This is within six, just barely, uh, so I am inspired, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, and then my opponent moves the other Winget along with all this shooting just to make sure that uh, they can take up these Heart Piercers along with these Snow Foxes. Um, so that's going to be the plan, including this unit. I'm not exactly sure uh, how this works. Uh, I mean, I could have looked it up, but I'll look it up later. But yeah, it's I don't remember if you move on to an obstacle. I know if you're touching it, you don't uh, consider it cover for you when you're shooting at targets. But I believe the rule about um, touching cover with your leader point uh, without issuing a halt order still is in effect. So I believe this will be a minus two to shoot at these uh, these snow foxes because so, I have stealthy. Um, so yeah, they're gonna go for that. Uh, this is kind of a log jam, so you know, just bump and uglies. Uh, and here is Kuzlo making a pretty good move here. Uh, I originally thought that I had placed it um, so Kuzlo would be charged by the Jarl if they uh, continued to the right here, but I forgot that Kuzlo is actually speed 8, not speed 7. So miscalculated, and now Kuzlo is in a perfect spot to not get charged by anything, right? I can't see with the Chimera, and then uh, the Jarl just can't see him due to the, uh, the terrain. So good move by my opponent. Uh, and that's going to be that. Let's go through the shooting first. Uh, oh, and then this charge. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the Mobby's uh, Mogwans charges into my snow foxes. Um, they they might survive, right? Because uh, Mobby's only have 12 attacks. Um, so if my opponent, you know, doesn't roll particularly well, uh, you know, it's 12 attacks on threes and then on twos. Right, so it's like eight-ish wounds. They might be vicious. In fact, I, I'm pretty sure they are. So like nine wounds, and I'm a 9-11. So it's a not double ones moment, but I don't expect to survive. Over here, uh, this Draugr unit uh, takes eight wounds. Oh, I'm sorry. No, this is not the Draugr. This is the Heart Piercers. So I take eight wounds from one War Trombone. I have cover, 
right? It shoots at me on fives with 10 attacks, hits me eight times and does eight wounds. Granted, I am wounded on twos. So I'm like, oh, that's uh, that's neat and just picks them up real quick. Uh, so some more hot rolling by my opponent there. Uh, right here, yeah, this unit <clears throat> fires off its war trombone into my um, snow foxes on sixes, uh, wounds me three times and gets a waiver. So that's that's pretty good. It's not... It's not insane. It's you know, it's a high variance there. Uh, over here, the goblins with their uh, mop up manage one wound on the trolls. Uh, who cares? They don't get the box card, and also I have fury anyway, so who cares? Uh, and over here, yeah, these guys I, they they do roll very well. I think they sink like ten wounds on me, but it's not that's not crazy. Uh, but they rolled box card anyway, so I'm like, it, you could have done one wound and killed me, right? Uh, so off off my snow foxes go. And over here, these Draugr end up taking four wounds from the uh, Crystal Pendant unit. Uh, and on a re-roll, I survive. So my opponent actually does roll a 10. Uh, and, I t and I'm and i like, wow, these dice. Uh, but on the re-roll, I survive it. Uh, I'm sorry, it was a 9 because this is uh, after the Iron Resolve triggered. So I'm down to four wounds. <clears throat> uh, and yeah, they, they pick them up. And I believe this is just their reform because uh, I think my opponent forgot and we just went back to do it. <laughs> So that's going to do it for turn two goblins. Uh, they did not get to any of their objectives just yet, but they will be pretty soon because they're protected by Draugr, right? I, in fact, have one unit of Draugr on all of these, and it is on purpose, right? I'm just making sure that the Wingets can't just fly around and, and pick these up whenever they want. So I'm putting a unit strength two unit that I don't really care about, which is Draugr. So anyway, uh, turn three, starting with the Varengar, of course. Uh, my opponent did make a mistake on their turn, which is this Bangit. Uh, they just withdrew from fighting uh, Magnild, which left them within charge range of Draugr. So my Draugr take that charge. <clears throat> I only need to do one wound to get it to double ones. So uh, yeah, we're just going to go for that. Uh, Magnild looking for a, a bit of salvation after that abysmal nerve check. Charges into the Inspiring Wiz. Um, my plan here, I just want to get a waiver on these... Um, on these mobbies obviously a kill would be excellent as well but a waiver will work because they do have the crystal pendant um and you know so it will blow up and do a lot of wounds to me but a waiver will make it so it's almost impossible that my opponent picks up this token on their next turn uh as i have these draugr to run forward and block charges right so if i kill off their inspiring uh it's more likely that i get that waiver uh you know than if they were inspired so of course yeah that's the best target for her so she goes in there I uh, could have got, gone after a winget, I guess, if I wanted. But anyway, uh, I do the bit of nimble positioning, right? So I was facing like so. Uh, I pivot, and then I nimble pivot and back up four, uh, which my opponent was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, yeah, just normal, normal uh, nimble movement stuff. So I back up four, blocking up these uh, Mogwans a little bit. Uh, the trolls here just, you know, take the counter charge. I do not get the uh, the one wound back for my regen. I place the Jarl to face off against Kuzlo, because fair enough. And then I take my uh, um, Jabberwock and go into the flank of the rabble back here. Now, this is why it was really important that I got this charge off with the Jarl. Because uh, with Kuzlo, because keep in mind, I thought that they would be, uh, what, four inches this way, right? So I thought they'd be about here, and I get that charge in, I block their line of sight, right, and then I uh, just take this um, Jabberwock charge. I keep thinking that they're Chimera. But uh, anyway, I take the Jabberwock charge, and by blocking the line of sight, I can I can line up my wizards in such a way that it's impossible that Kuzlo sees them, and then get the Drain Life here so the uh, Jabberwock might just one-shot this, right? So that was the plan, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> a bit of a mistake by forgetting some stats, so we're going to have to move uh, elsewhere. I do move this wizard to just use a drain life onto this um, onto this weapon team. Just going to go for the easy kill. A uh, bit of lightning bolt as well if I want it. Uh, and that's going to be that, so let's move. Let's see how it all goes. <clears throat> First off, this Draugr, yeah, uh, I do only one wound to that Bangit, but it's all I needed to do, so I kill it and overrun to block up some charges. Over here, uh, yeah, Magnild continues to fail. Uh, it's, I mean, she does get a waiver, so, you know, I've got to give her props for that. But Magnild here, I charge in, I hit six times, and again, wounding on twos, I roll five ones. And I'm like, geez, uh, <laughs> these, are some, these are some spiky dice today. Uh, I do get a waiver, though, so fair enough. I think they're a 9-11, so I must have rolled an eight there. Um, but yeah, only a waiver. Uh, at least I got the waiver, I guess, but it just doesn't really matter with a Goblin Wiz. They're not going to charge me, right? So it's killing nothing. 
Uh, or, you know, once you've disordered them. And right here, yes, my dice do bounce back a little bit. I only do one wound, right? I've got 12 attacks on fives, uh, or hitting on fives, wounding on threes. I only manage one, but one is enough because I also roll the 11 to get the waiver there. And I'm like, yeah, perfect. That that works out. Uh, back here, my Jabberwock charges into the rear or into the flank of these uh, rabble. I don't see what that wound is. I think that's a seven either a seven or a one and i'm pretty sure i did more than one uh but i do not get the waiver so you know wasn't expecting it <clears throat> without the uh, drain life support and right here yes uh double one two of the game i get this unit up to 21 wounds uh 20 no it's got to be higher than 21 that's gotta be 26 uh i do quite a few wounds here uh and i double one it so <laughs> like well damn it uh, I will say this is this is one of those things about double ones that I don't like is just that you can activate the unit, right? Because this unit can activate, that means the blaster that's right here can actually charge into me because it can be a combo charge, right? If it weren't for that, they can't because if this unit withdraws from my um, Jabberwock and then backs up uh, to give the base room for this, this unit cannot disengage because the Jabberwock's right there, right? So they'll disengage uh, not their full one and be trapped. Um, no, that's not true. The Jabberwock's not that close. Right. So they could disengage and still get this charge off, maybe. Right? Back up. Uh... No, they still can't come within one of me, and they didn't start within one of me. Yeah, so the Jabberwock is blocking them because I'm railroading them a little bit. Uh, so, yep, this double one's going to make it so I can be combo charge, which is not ideal. And here's the end of turn shot at the end of three. Um, my opponent, or I, again, I have not gone after this last objective. It's, you know, covered in goblins, so we're going to have to wait on that. But I'm I'm pretty happy, minus the abysmal rolling by McNild so far and, these, uh, and that double one on the trolls. Uh, the rest of the turn worked really well or worked, you know, how I need it to, so fair. Uh, so with that said, let's go into goblin turn three. <clears throat> First off, these goblins, yeah, they just run forward and grab the objective token under them. Uh, these these goblins charge into the flank of my dragger, uh, just looking for an easy kill there. Uh, Magnild is within six, I believe. She might not be. I think actually she's exactly out of six on that one. Uh, and then we have the wavered unit here, just, just remaining engaged. Uh, just to make sure that, like, yeah, anyway, they, there are reasons to do it, right? Like, if I don't attack with the Draugr and remain engaged, now they don't get a hindered charge, right? Because it's not a charge. Uh, so they just sit right there. Uh, these guys, you know, all three whizzes, including the wavered one, but specifically these two whizzes and this uh, war trombone just are going to try to roast Magnilled real quick. Uh, still, it's going to be hard to hit her, but it hasn't hurt them in the past. They've been nailing these five pluses, so why not? Uh, over here, yeah, these guys just go into the rear of my snow foxes. Should be an easy pickup. Uh, as you can see, I did zero wounds. <laughs> Again, so drain life six plus lightning bolt four. The lightning bolt, I believe, was on fives, but drain life wasn't. I do zero wounds to this uh, war trombone because I'm just that kind of a player. So it's going to move forward and try to roast my magus real quick. Um, you know, fair. Uh, and then I, I think my opponent just didn't see that they could get this blaster into combat because they instead decide to countercharge with a devastated rabble horde. Uh, and then that also locks these guys up, right? Like they can't uh, turn to fight, right? Oh, no, they could have, right? They could have uh, just picked up and placed and Magua has charged into my... Yeah, they definitely could have done this. Magua charges first, gets into my flank. It's exactly 50. Then you pick up and place uh, and fight me to my front. Uh, but I guess they just didn't want their rear exposed to something or their flank. Who knows? So anyway, they just uh, these goblins just sort of sit here. Uh, I think that's a pretty big mistake, but we'll see. Uh, and back here, yeah, all of my opponent's shooting this time doesn't manage to mess me up. Uh, only puts me up to three wounds, uh, which is a box card to kill me twice. And then, of course, I iron resolve one back, so I'm down to two because they do not box card. Or double box card. Uh, these... These trolls take two wounds from something. I'm not uh, probably this breath weapon over here. Uh, does two wounds to them. It doesn't get a box car. The Magus takes two wounds. Uh, that's a nine, I think, to w get a waiver. Doesn't do anything though. And over here, Kuzlo does take the charge into my Jarl. Does three wounds with a plus one due to uh, Ravenous Lizard. It does not get a waiver, uh, which is lucky on my uh, on my half, right? Uh, and over here, <clears throat> I don't remember how many wounds this is. I think it's two. Uh, for Magua, but it is, again, uh, a hindered charge into a Chimera, so it uh, doesn't get the boxcar waiver, which I'm thankful for. And back here, yeah, my, <laughs> my opponent uh, does not roll very well on the wounds. Granted, it is 50 attacks, so, like, 
you know, it, they rolled more than a few, but like 450 wasn't that bad. And I was like, man, maybe I should have just left them over there and let this unit die and like, you know, just been facing forward. But then they roll boxcar on the nerve and I'm like, oh, it wouldn't have mattered uh, because they did at least two in their first set of 25 dice. So, <laughs> yep, off they go. And here's the end of turn three for the goblins. Uh, they have picked up this loot token, uh, but the other two are still protected by Draugr. So it's going to be Varengur 2 to Goblin 1. And with that, we'll move on to turn four. So turn four for the Varengur, uh, we're still technically winning, but uh, we're definitely on the back foot here. Uh, we've got the Draugr taking the charge into the Crystal Pendant unit. Um, I'm not sure I should have done this. Maybe, I mean, if this unit wasn't right here, right now I'm out of its line of sight, right? So I'm out of this unit's line of sight, this unit's line of sight, and the Winged. But uh, I really wanted to just disengage one and force this unit to come and charge me, right? Because the Crystal Pendant's going to do more damage than uh, than a hindered charge here. But if I disengage one, these guys can see me and just get a flank charge. So it's about the same. Um, and it lets these goblins enter the fight a lot earlier uh, because they'll have to, you know, they'll have to kill me uh, before this unit can actually come around. Uh, so no overrun. Instead, I just take the charge and try to kill off this unit to neutralize the Crystal Pendant. Uh, I do take Magnild into this weapon team, uh, just looking to get a kill since I've done nothing so far. <laughs> right? I double wanted to bang it, and bang it, and then did one wound to a whiz. So maybe I can do a war engine. Maybe it's the uh, the individuals that are the problem. And over here on the right, I take one uh, Jabberwock into Magwaz. Uh, my plan is just to I've got double drain life over here, right? So I'm just gonna go boop boop, uh, get them high enough that the uh, Jabberwock can hopefully just one shot them. Uh, and then I back up with the trolls to, or I back them up with the trolls to kill off this weapon team, or not a weapon team, a war trombone real quick, uh, and get out of the line of sight of uh, most of the units, you know, again, like uh, the winget, uh, just so he can't charge me. Not that you would charge with the winget most most commonly, but I don't want to be. Uh, and then same thing here, <clears throat> getting out of Kuzlo and the winget's charge. Uh, the Jarl backs up or withdraws one and then can see the flank to support my uh, Chimera. Or not Chimera, I just did it again. The Jabberwock, who has a flank into the Israbble. <clears throat> and I just am go going to ignore Magua to get rid of these scoring units. So yeah, double charge there. Uh, the trolls go for the third time's a charm into these uh, very, very, very wounded Rabble. And over here, uh, the Jabberwock, or I'm sorry, the um, Ma the Magi do four wounds with Drain Life, bringing the Jabberwock up to 11 attacks now. So uh, hopefully I can just get rid of this 12-14 unit. And over here, yeah, both of those uh, hordes of Rabble are picked up by my uh, Jarl, Jabberwock, and Trolls respectively. Uh, and the other trolls do pick up their war trombone as well, so we're just going to turn to face, as you can see. Uh, we're dodging Kuzlo this way and just facing off against the remaining goblins on the hill. Uh, I do manage to kill off the mobbies or Mogwans with the other Jabberwock, which is very good. Uh, there's very limited units now. And because I got a pretty good drain life here, I heal off the two wounds from this Magus, and then I heal off most of the wounds from these trolls. That one is still on them, and these guys regen their one wound off. So I'm still, I'm actually pretty healthy now. And over here, uh, my yeah, the Draugr do manage to pick up uh, that regiment of Magwans. The five down here is what I did with the Crystal Pendant. Uh, keep in mind that your opponent rolls the Crystal Pendant. Uh, so my in this case, my opponent has the Crystal Pendant, blows up, uh, then I roll to wound all my units, not you. So yeah, I pick them up, I do five wounds to the Draugr. So they're at nine, not five, but uh, I, you know, I'm not sure what's going on here, <laughs> but we, we did it correctly later. Uh, so anyway, uh, and then... Uh, yes, and then Magnil did manage to pick up the War Trombone, and then uh, she fell back to, you know, just not touching that whiz that she fought before. And that's going to be it for turn four for the Varengur. I still haven't picked up this last point, so the score has not changed. It is still two to one, uh, but that might change in a second here. Which is turn four goblin. Uh, both these units just turn as you can uh, as you can see. The winget just moves to be within one or within I'm sorry within three of the objective the draugr are currently protecting. Along with uh, the triple whiz, we're just gonna you know throw as much damage as we need into the draugr. It's not too much because again they're already at nine wounds, um, so we'll see. And over here, we've got a weapon team. Uh, I probably would have faced this a bit better uh, just to make sure you could shoot at the Draugr in case all else fails because you need to be going after the victory points right now. And they, I believe, plan to just roast my, my wizard real quick. So I probably would have turned just a little bit better. But anyway, 
Uh, and again, your flanks don't matter. You're a war drone bone, so treble attacks anyway. Uh, the blaster uh, finally gets into the fight, ready to fight these trolls. Uh, Magua decides that lightning bolt is a better recourse, uh, and then I believe later takes that back and charges into the uh, Jabberwock, which I do think is a much better move. <laughs> <laughs> like, who cares about the Lightning Bolt 4, especially as you're minus one to hit. Uh, Kuzlo just turns towards the battle. Uh, Kuzlo, an amazing flanker. So, uh, And here we go with the Winget, again, getting within three of the objective, just in case we kill off these Draugr. So over here, uh, first off, these are the Draugr on the right, and my opponent does a very good play. First off, they, uh, they shoot with the Winget, uh, which misses, I believe. Uh, and then the... Uh, Kuzlo, which I forgot has a sticky tongue, uh, just gets within 12 and drags them off the objective. So drags them two inches off, does two wounds to them, uh, picks that up real quick. And this just shows off the power. There's a lot of naysaying on the internet about Windblast and Enthrall. They're excellent spells, uh, like truly excellent. Uh, they're not going to be, you know, like especially units that just sort of have them, you know, like Soul Flares or, or again, like Kuzlo does not need sticky tongue to be good. Uh, the amount of disruption they can do can just win games with how Kings of War is scored. So anyway, really good move here. Uh, over here, yes, the uh, the Draugr picked up very easily. I believe the Winget alone just like blasts them. Um, <clears throat> gets them killed, uh, and then my opponent goes for a Hex onto my uh, Magus down here, that just the regular Drain Life one, uh, and then maybe tries to fire some stuff at Magnilled, but either way, it doesn't do anything. And back here, yeah, they uh, burn up my <clears throat> uh, Jabberwock, doing two wounds to it. The blaster, again, the blaster gets into that fight. Uh, we've got Magua getting me up to five wounds on uh, on this Jabberwock. That is a box car to kill it twice. Uh, I don't believe they're brutal. So uh, does not manage to kill it, and in fact does not manage to waver it, which is perfect. And over here, yeah, the blaster blows up, does five wounds to the trolls, which is nothing. And uh, that's going to be it for turn four for the goblins. But they do burn the last two tokens, bringing them to three VP and Varengar only at two. So we're a little bit far, uh, we're a little bit behind now, but we'll see what the Varengar have with turn five. We've been behind pretty much this whole game, so uh, <laughs> you know what? As long as I'm surprised we're doing this well, I guess. Um, so with my turn five, I'm going to, uh, I believe, yeah, so this um, Jabberwock here, I'm going to go for a charge into this in, uh, little whiz because I can see it right now, right? I'm very tall, uh, and uh, I can just turn, go, nimble pivot, go, and just charge into this. Uh, so, and I have uh, Strider, so I don't care about this wall. And the plan here, I believe it's a one or, uh, no, it's got to be a two inch overrun. Uh, and then uh, I, I'm within three of this objective. I burn it real quick. Uh, so easy peasy should be. So we're going to go for that. And over here, yeah, you can see uh, that charge going off. Again, Magnilde goes into the Inspiring Sorcerer or Wiz. I could have double charged here, um, but it blocks. It could block up the Jabberwock uh, unless I disengage backwards, right? So I didn't want to force that. And also it seemed like I had enough force already. So instead, I go into this whiz uh, to remove the inspiring, right, um, to still help in that combat. And over here on the right, well, I guess the center, more like, uh, I do take the Jabberwock that was over here fighting against Magua. I charge into the flank of these um, this rabble along with the front with my trolls. Uh, these trolls go into the last war trombone, I believe, uh, just trying to pick it up real quick. And then I move my Jarl. Uh, to maybe move in to burn that objective if all goes wrong, since I still have one turn at least. Uh, I do have this little hex caster. I'm going to go for a drain life onto this um, war trombone because it's more important that my trolls are healthy, uh, or that that my trolls are healthy and that this unit is dead or this unit is dead. I could also maybe drain them to make sure that the uh, Jabberwock can go. In fact, that's almost certainly what I'm going to go for. Uh, I need to kill off this unit more than I need this Magus. So I'm going to go for that. The other Magus just uses its horse. Oh, and this is uh, the new hex rules. I would actually go over here to help uh, kill off this um, this Winget with my Drain Life, but I'm hexed. And under the new rules, not only do you take two wounds per, uh, per hit of a spell, you also cannot move and use your spell. So you have to sit still. So anyway, I'm going to go for that. These Draugr just get ready to get charged by uh, Kuzlo, but then are out of range of Magua, I believe. 
And here are the combat. So first off, <laughs> yep, I do five wounds to this Wiz. Uh, knock it up to six because I am brutal. Uh, and I only get a waiver. So that's rolling a three. Uh, needed a five. And it was re-rollable because, well, Magnil does what she does. She goes in here. She actually does get the Wiz here. I believe they're a 911, right? So I get it up to uh, seven wounds, right? Yeah, because I needed a four to kill it. And uh, I just roll a three on the first one, so I just get a waiver, and I'm like, well, cool. So I double waiver these whizzes, you know, just normal stuff. And the rest of the turn looks like this. Uh, so everything that's not on the left is going pretty well, right? Uh, I I pick up the war trombone easily, I pick up the last horde of or the last horde of rebel over here, right? The third horde, uh, pretty easily. I have positioned myself, you know, to be ready to rock if I need if need be. Uh, I've turned the trolls to be in kind of this, you know, little back-to-back uh, -back formation uh, to face off, right? Like a winget can rear charge here, but then this guy can only front charge me, and then, or, uh, uh, no, that's right, I'm out of, I think I'm out of charge for that, but in charge for this, I think. Whatever it is, I go back-to-back, -back, get ready to charge, right? Um, and I get a very lucky roll here of, I, I believe I only did one wound to that winget, uh, and it must be like an 11-13, so I just pick it up real quick. Or I do, whatever I did, I needed a boxcar to kill it, and I nailed the boxcar and kill it. So, uh, a bit of luck right there. Uh, very nice. So, with that said, let's move into Goblin turn 5. So, Goblin turn 5, uh, we are going to turn to face to try to mess around with this objective um, a little bit more. I do think my opponent makes a mild mistake here. Um, I'm not exactly sure what they're what they need to do, right? Like they need to charge into the uh, Jabberwock to disorder it and then block it up with these yielding individuals. But failing that, they probably need to just make it so with this object. Uh, no, that one's wavered. So yeah, so it can't do it. I don't think. Uh, I, I I was thinking like you could just line up the wizards to make sure that there's just nowhere to land, so I can't just move over and grab this. But since this wizard is uh, wavered, that's not going to work. So I guess they do the best they can and just get in the way. But I can just walk through right now and burn that objective token automatically if I don't die from shooting. Uh, and the whiz over here, or the, I'm sorry, the uh, last winget just gets ready to shoot at some trolls. Fair enough. Uh, and Kuzlo just rolls on in. Could have taken the charge into the Draugr to pick them up, but I think they rightly realize that the Draugr aren't doing anything in this game, or aren't likely to, uh, because I'm probably, with with uh, Kuzlo right here, I can't really get back into the last point to score at all. I'm just an attrition piece. So they roll up forward to uh, just lend their... Um, their ravenous lizard to my uh to to my nerve checks possible nerve checks right and i do think this is pretty good my only problem here is that they've given a flank to these trolls uh so now they have to target this troll unit right and then this troll unit is the one that's facing towards the remaining goblins so eh, maybe some slight finagling of that angle would have been a little bit better uh so in the goblin shooting phase they are going to take aim uh and well, with their one whiz, but it does have the boomstick, uh, into my uh, guy on the hill, the Jabberwock there, uh, managing to get it up to seven wounds. Uh, so is that five, does two to it, but uh, thankfully does not roll the 10, uh, I guess it was a 10 twice, because that Jarl's definitely with a nine uh, to kill it. So fair for me and doesn't get a waiver either. Uh, and over here, yeah, the trolls end up taking eight wounds in total. I believe that's, is that just the winget? <laughs> Like, what is shooting? Oh, no, it's also Ma Magua. But yeah, they get them up to eight wounds, and then they're minus one on their nerve, right? So they're only a 16, so it's an eight twice again, and uh, they luckily miss it. So we're going to move into turn six for the Varenger. So turn six, Varenger. Yes, uh, this Chimera, which was over here on the hill, can just roll on over, grab the objective real quick. Uh, so I'm going to do that. The other Chimera uh, just looks for killing off these stupid wizards. Uh, continues fighting. I am actually facing uh, this way, right? It's just that we don't play nice uh, with other models, so we're just facing the way we are. Uh, Magnild is going to try to finally kill one of these stupid individuals. So, you know, six turns the charm, right? So we're going to go in there. 
And off here on the right, uh, yeah, I'm going to take my wounded trolls. They, It is a hindered charge. I'm going to go into Kuzlo, try to kill that off real quick. Uh, and then I've got the double drain life here for the Winget. Uh, and then I just move the completely healthy trolls plus my Jarl to just sit on the objective. I'm not afraid of a Winget uh, flank charging me. I'd be more afraid of it shooting at me. So <clears throat> we're going to go for that. Uh, just to make sure that I have unit strength no matter what. Uh, the Jarl here, right, like, they're going to have to pick stuff to shoot at. And if they choose the Jarl, that's probably the weakest pick because I'm still inspired due to this wizard over here. Uh, and then if they choose the Trolls, the Jarl's at least going to block off the um, the Winget from getting the the point there. So <clears throat> I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to at least tie, right? So that's the plan. So with that said, uh, with my shooting, I do manage to waver this winget, doing four wounds to drain life. Uh, I heal myself up a little bit. Uh, I actually did hit four times with my drain life. I dealt eight damage to myself, but then drain life healed me for four. <laughs> so yeah, uh, good times. And over here, um, I get Kuzlo up to 10 wounds. I can't land the kill though, but I get the waver and Kuzlo's pretty much trapped, right? Um, might be able to, yeah, it's pretty much trapped there. Uh, can't withdraw, can't counter charge, can only run away. Uh, so, you know, had to get away from the combats here. More than one inch now. And over here, I do manage to kill these stupid wizards finally. So uh, the Jabberwock now rolling in there with plus five attacks up to 12. Uh, and no, you know, still has its thunderous. So pretty easy kill, picks it up. Uh, Magnil finally kills off that wizard. Uh, and this guy burns that last token. So we're going to be sitting at... Uh, Okay, and the, yeah, and then uh, these combats, yeah, I already showed those combats. What is this showing? So anyway, that's going to be that. Let's move into Goblin turn six. I am now at three points for the Varenger, three points for the Goblins. Uh, the Goblins are just going to turn to face, uh, get ready for a turn seven if it's possible. So move five, right, uh, and get into a fight. And yep, just showing out the score now, I guess. <laughs> And over here, you can see the goblins do charge into my Jabberwock, uh, just looking to pick it up uh, real quick. It does have a mop pop as well, so it's, it's not that unlikely. While the Boomstick Wizard uh, probably also just going to take aim at some trolls to remove that unit strength. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, they, they take aim, uh, try to kill off the trolls. Uh, it No, they can't see the trolls. I'm not on the hill. Uh, so I guess maybe they fired at the Jarl. Either way, they, they don't get the kill here. Uh, and this is going to be the end of game state because we roll for seven and there is no turn seven. So it ends up being a four to three victory for the Vanguard. Just barely, right? Like just squeak that out. Uh, so yeah, let's get into the conclusions real quick and a bit of list discussion. So as I said at the beginning of the video, I think Raze is probably my favorite scenario or the best scenario out of the base book. I'm not sure if it's my favorite, but it's uh, probably the best the best written one i do not like that you score on turn two and i do not like that you start with first player both of those are not the best pieces of design in a game like this uh but you know with the list that we were running it wasn't a problem so instead it made just a really fun game uh that was very very nerve-wracking for me right because you know i made a i made a few mistakes but i was just on the back foot the entire time like my opponent's dice were on they were making relatively good decisions, and I was just in a matchup that I was like, oh, my, can my Varenger actually take this battle? Uh, so with that said, I will talk about the Goblin list a little bit. I like it a lot. Uh, I don't love the magic items uh, or the uh, magical artifacts. Uh, I'm not a fan. I don't. The, the diadem's a waste of time. Uh, I don't love the healing brew either on a rabble horde. Uh, it's not bad, but like staying, staying stone's just better. Uh, so I would swap this out for the Stang Zone. It's not in your list. Uh, put that there instead of the Healing Brew. The Diadem is just trash. It's a garbage item um, because it takes it takes all negatives except for movement, right? Like, just not worth running, I think, personally. Uh, and it's a range 12, you know, range 12 thing. The Goblins are already charging 10. Eh, who cares? So uh, I say free up that 30 points there. The Mobby's packs, interesting idea to put the Crystal Pendant on them because, yeah, they're going to die, but they, you know, they've got the 12 attacks, they've got Crush 1 and Vicious, and then they hit on 3s with Wild Charge D3 and Speed 6. So a, a decent charge range, right, dealing some decent damage and then just blowing up seems fair. Um, I'd probably still not run the Mobby's and instead run uh, regiments of Fleabag Riders for this sort of a thing. 
right? Because just being speed, I, I think they're speed 10 in goblins, aren't they? <laughs> but they're nimble, thunderous one, and they do the same thing, which is get in there, deal, uh, deal a bit of damage, really lock people down, especially uh, considering both those units are nimble, uh, and then just blow up, right? So I think swapping those to uh, both of these, both this and Magwans, uh, to units of Fleet Bag Riders would probably do the same idea, but better. Uh, triple War Trombone, excellent. Mop Up Launchers, interesting. I do think they're good, but I do think Big Rock Throwers are just better, or whatever they're called in Goblins. The, the Catapults. Um, Goblin Blasters, really good. Uh, not the best showing in this game, but still a really good unit. Wingets, of course, are amazing. Uh, just... <laughs> Yeah, everyone's heard uh, the thoughts on Wingets, but they're an amazing unit. Um, so bring them if you can. Bang it really good. Wings, an interesting item on them. Uh, I'd probably just go for, if you're going to go for an item, I'd probably just say like uh, the, what is it? The the fire fire potion, right? The Why, why am I blanking on that? You know, the plus one versus uh, regen units uh, or just nothing. Or maybe, uh, maybe even the... The arrow that lets you re-roll one failed wound, that might be fine. Um, but I think wingets need nothing. So, or bangets, sorry. Uh, so yeah, also wingets, but <laughs> but bangit, right? Wings of Honey Maze, still an interesting item, um, but it's almost an entire Goblin Whiz. Not that you can bring another one in this list, but you get the point. Uh, triple Whiz, really good. Uh, really good setup here. Boomstick plus uh, Zephyr Crown and the Hexing Inspire guy. Uh, interesting build on the Hex there. I think that might get a bit more play as we are seeing a lot more wizards that are not Spellcaster Zero. I know that's a that's a, a point of, uh, of concern for a lot of players that there's just so many Spellcaster Zeros that are popular casting units and it's like, yeah, fair. Um, I brought Hex to Masters back in 2019. I wasn't impressed. Um, but I also didn't play against any of the things I brought Hex for, which were Morgoth, which is now nerfed. Um, so, but I, I could see it definitely on a Goblin Wiz. They're cheap enough that that 10 points is just not that big of a deal. And the Inspiring Talisman one is probably what you're going to bring anyway. Uh, Magwan Juice, uh, that is a flavor unit if I've ever seen one. Uh, really cool, 150 points. It's about the same as a go uh, Goblin King on Chariot. So I think it's uh, just real dealer's choice. I think it's absolutely fine. Um, and then finally, Kuzla and Madfall, excellent unit. Uh, great in Goblins, great in Ogres. You can run them, run them. So yeah, I really like this army. Uh, it's 22 units, 26 unit strength, and it still has all these war engines. Uh, so just showing off the power of goblins, uh, just really strong. Um, there are a few things that I would change just to make it a bit more meta, but the only thing I really look at and go, um, or the things that I look at and go, why are the, the diadem and dragon kind, the healing brew, right? This should be the staying stone. This should just not be in your list. And then I'd probably say that, uh, running these as flea bag riders will almost always be better. So just swap them out. I think it's almost a direct swap for that, especially gaining 30 points here. So anyway, uh, I've already talked about the Varengar list. It performs about the way I think it would perform. Uh, it is relatively fun, but uh, difficult uh, difficult to play as it just doesn't have a lot of it doesn't have a lot of speed in it that is uh, like its real hitting pieces, right? So yeah, still fun to play though. Uh, if you want to try it out, try it out. Anyway, that's gonna be it. Until next time, bye.